UW360 is proudly supported by BECU, a not-for-profit, member-owned credit union. Pacific Office Automation, copy, print, workflow, and IT, problem solved. One of the first things you notice about Bruce Crandall is his sense of humor. Take his story about receiving his draft notice in 1952 from the Selective Service. I got a letter in the mail and it says, greetings, you've been selected by your friends and neighbors. And I looked up my two friends and beat hell out of them and found out it wasn't them, so it, uh, no, I didn't. But that humor and that story belie the larger-than-life essence of Bruce's character. He's a hero, and he's one of eight people who attended the University of Washington to be awarded the nation's highest military recognition, the Medal of Honor, a citation for actions and risks beyond the call of duty. If your grandchildren or your children were walking out on the ice and they fell in, what would you do? Those were my men. Even the ones on the ground that I never met, they were mine. Bruce, as so many heroes, comes from unassuming roots. As a teen growing up in Olympia, he was a baseball star, an All-American. And while in high school, he was also a member of the Washington National Guard. I joined the Guard when I was 15. I lied a little bit about my age, but it was an income thing. As a member of the National Guard, Bruce, in his second year at UW, was free to ignore the draft notice he received in 1952. But he didn't. Instead, he signed up for active duty with the Army. I figured if I went in the military and served, I could still play ball. He indeed became an indispensable team member, but not as a batter, as an Army helicopter pilot. By 1965, at age 32, he was a major in the newly formed Air Mobile Division, the 1st Cavalry. And that's how he found himself moving troops and provisions in the jungles of Vietnam. Johnson had taken over, and uh, the decision was made to build up. And uh, with the Cav was one of the first, well, it was the first division-sized unit to, uh, to be deployed. By the fall of 1965, the troops ordered to Vietnam by President Johnson were facing increasing resistance by the North Vietnamese Army, trained soldiers who posed a more organized threat than the guerrilla forces of the Viet Cong. When the North Vietnamese Army attacked the Special Forces base at Play Me, the hunt was on. The 1st and 7th Cavalries were ordered to pursue the enemy and attack. That's what we were looking for, really. We wanted to find them and fight them. It's that search and destroy. Bruce, with 16 choppers in the first cab under his command, airlifted troops to a jungle clearing named X-Ray, which served as a landing zone. On the fifth flight in, U.S. forces were ambushed. So began the Battle of Ia Drang. On the fifth lift, they just shot the living hell out of us. We uh, had people shooting from just outside of my rotor with People popped up uh, behind a tree, and one guy was in the tree, and they were shooting people off my aircraft. When I came out of that landing zone, I had three dead and three wounded. And that was only on Bruce's helicopter. The losses were devastating. The landing zone had to be closed because uh, I, I lost, well, over half my aircraft had to be grounded, including mine. But there were hundreds of U.S. troops on the ground, surrounded, wounded, and under attack. With bullets flying at the landing zone, medevac choppers, following strict protocol, wouldn't fly into the fray. Bruce knew he couldn't leave his comrades stranded. I asked for volunteers to go with me, and my wingman, Ed Freeman, volunteered with his aircraft. There were about 450 people on the ground, and they were being attacked by over 2,000. So Ed and I kept going the rest of the day, taking in ammo and medical supplies and water. And we'd been in the air 14 and a half hours flying. So, when we finished, I was really pretty bad shape. I can't stand blood. And they were washing my aircraft out with five gallon cans of water. And I, I, I went behind the, the, the helicopter and got sick when I got out. Bruce and Ed Freeman made 22 flights. They evacuated 70 wounded. Both Bruce and Ed were awarded the Medal of Honor for their actions. The idea that we would leave somebody behind, it's just not acceptable to any of us. 
The Battle of Iadrang cost the lives of over 300 U.S. troops. It was the first major battle in Vietnam, but it wasn't the last time Bruce risked his life to do his job as a soldier. Every flight I ever made in Vietnam was to do the best I could do. And the only thing that was in my mind was that I should do this, that I sh don't want to screw up and cause other people to die. And out of all the honors awarded to Bruce, there is one that stands above all others. I think the greatest honor a soldier can have is to lead troops and lead our young people. When somebody says, God bless you, like he already has.